everybody and welcome back to all the mods 8. In the last episode we got ourselves our ME system up and running so now we don't have to worry about using that laggy crafting system from integrated dynamics anymore. It's great. And as you can see we have built ourselves a building which will now house our applied energistic system. I've moved it from the basement to over here and it's great. So I've just got the furnace hooked up here at the moment because I'm sick of running back and forth trying to smelt stuff. So it's perfect, we got everything laid out right here. This building has got four floors, and I've also got a few more travel anchors around. But if we drop down here, this is actually an elevator that we made with Create um, during the live stream. I'll have that pinned down in the pinned comment. So this is more or less like a reception area. I was going to have my crafters or my CPUs down here, but um, I decided to not do that. So we have like a lobby kind of area down here, which is really nice. We got ourselves a restricted area. I didn't build this on stream. I built it after stream. But if you come in here, we have this guy here, which is actually a flux researcher, which is nice. Uh, he's given me insane deals at the moment because I did find myself a villager hat. So I can basically buy tons of Thirtus Quartz for one emerald, which is great. And also I can sell him other stuff like quartz, glass and silicone, which is really cool too. Down here, uh, this is going to be the auto crafting room. Beneath this glass floor, this is where we're going to have our pattern providers and molecular assemblers. We're going to have, I think, about three per side and then four of them this way. But the benefit of having it in the basement is we can continuously go down and down and down until we hit bedrock. That way we can in, like set up as many things as we want and auto craft nearly everything. And then in this room above the glass here, we're going to have like furnaces and whatever, whatever else that needs to be here to be auto crafting. I love this elevator. It's so cool. It's made by using Create. There's a rope pulley up there with an electric motor. And I have these two buttons here with redstone links behind them. So we can go say first floor, which will push a piston right here, which will stop the floor. And we can walk out. This room here is going to be for all of the crafting um, storage crafters. Like all these guys, 64K and then all of the... Uh, crafting co-processing units. They're all going to be set up in here and we're going to have multiple of them. Push this button again, it drops us down to the bottom floor and then press this one, it brings us all the way up to the top floor. Really, really cool. Other things we did on stream is we built ourselves a bridge over there which connects ourselves this part of our base to this side of the base because we are going to be putting more uh, buildings over there. We also copy and pasted one of these uh, farming towers I have and I've built this uh, two more behind it and this one here is just farming in ferium essence it is so so fast as you can see like all the little red and orange particles on it that's red fertilizer it increases the speed of the crop growing and down here we got ourselves a compacting drawer which is now like compacting all of the ferium essence that's been made over there and in that farm as well because we actually have what's down here called an ender drawer uh, it's got a frequency of like a some sort of tipped arrow, a netherite hoe, dragon's breath, a broken disc, and a netherite pickaxe. Yeah, I didn't set that. That's just what it came with. And you use yourself, your configurator, to link it between two ender chests. So that ender chest is just extracting onto that compacting drawer from the ender chest or ender drawer that's over here, which is getting all the inferior essence from this farm. And we're going to be using that inferior essence now today. What I want to do is start generating resources, but there's a couple of things we're missing to be able to do that. We need to go to the end and defeat the Ender Dragon, travel to an end city, find a boat, and get ourselves a dragon head. Because the item I want to make now is this guy. It's called a Chunk Destroyer. From what I've seen, this guy basically destroys chunks, as its name implies. It is so, so fast. You basically put it down, mark an area on how many chunks you wanted to go, and it will mine them all out, which is crazy. The other thing we need to do is make armor. We need to be able to fight the Ender Dragon, and I want to create a flight in the end. And to do that, we need to defeat the Wither multiple times and make ourselves what's called a flight augment from Mystical Agriculture. Even though we have flight around our base, yeah, it, it'd be better if we had an actual creative flight system. It's good just to have this early game, but we need something better. But before we fight the Wither, we might as well make ourselves a full set of armor. So we're just going to take out a bunch of this Inferium Essence right now. Now the problem is we can't use this block version yet until we've made the Master Infusion Stones. We are going to need a couple stacks of those regular Inferium Essence now as well. So to start off, let's go in here and go to Mystical Agriculture. We need to make ourselves an Infusion Crystal. Uh, it's pretty cheap. It's just a diamond, a prosperity shard, and inferium essence. So we'll just make one of those. It has a thousand uses. So that's perfect. 
we need to upgrade all the way to the premium. So we want to try and get as much as this as, as we can just to start with. And then once we make our master one, we can then use blocks instead, which make it go so much quicker. Four is almost enough. I believe we need eight in total because we need ourselves this guy right here. And we need a Supremium Gemstone, which requires two. So we can craft one of these right now. But then we're missing two more Essence. So we need to get a bit more. There we go. That should be more than enough. So now we can make ourselves a Master Infusion Crystal. And perfect. And later on, we can actually put this inside of a crafter, which will automatically upgrade all the Essences to the top tier. Which should be perfect. So what we want to do now is instead of using the Essence, we use the blocks here. And we'll go all the way up, using up as many as we can. Perfect, so we got ourselves 11 Supremium Blocks. That should be more than enough to what, for what we need. Now what I want to do is grab out a couple more and hold on to at least maybe one stack or at least yeah, maybe about eight of each block. And then we can use that Essence to actually make ourselves. Because we need about, let's say, I think it's about 16 Prosperity Ingots and 16 Prosperity Gemstones of each tier of an Essence. I believe that's all we need to make the armor and all of our tools. We are going to be making all the tools as well. We're going to be making ourselves a premium Paxel, which will then just leave us a hot bar with just a sword and a Paxel. So it'll be a tree in one, which will be perfect. And we'll also be making upgrades for this guy then as well. So there's a pros uh, Prudentium. You know what? 16 might actually be better than having that. So we'll just go stick with 16 of each. And then last over three blocks. So there we go. So we'll just grab out a couple stacks of this and then we'll uncompress all of these now. There we go, perfect. And now we want to do is this. Go in here and get ourselves that, a gemstone, and make 16 of them. And then the same thing with the ingots. I might as well hold on to them and then just do it like this, makes it easier. Seems I didn't have enough gemstones or ingots, so we'll just make a few more. All that's left now is the, what's it called? The supremium one now. So 16 supremium. Uh, we might need more than that, we'll see. And then 16 supremium gems, perfect. So now all we have to do is get out some diamonds. We're actually kind of getting low on diamonds. Oh. Well, we're a lot lower than I thought. <laughs> we might need to go mining for diamonds because I need a full set of diamond armor unless I use up the diamond armor right here. Because as you can actually, might have noticed, I don't really have my old armor. Yeah, about that. My armor is basically on its last legs. It's about to break. So I don't want to break it because it's got some really nice stats on it, like the extra speed, the protection is pretty good, extra health. Yeah, I want to take all the augments off of that and apply it to this armor. I hope we can do that. I won't be doing it now today, but I hope we can eventually do it using a reforging table and a salvaging table. So, you know what? We'll just grab a random piece of, of armor. That's okay to use. Yeah, I don't want the life mending anyway. And then these boots. Ooh, they got better falling on it. But once we have creative flight, it's not going to really matter. Unless let's actually make a new pair of boots because unless this pair of boots here has anything. 20% extra speed. Mm, okay, I kind of want to hold on to that. We'll just use this armor here then. So what we need to do is put gems on the top, ingots on the side, and put that in the center. And there we go. Upgrade the armor all the way. And we just need to keep doing that. And also we need to do it for our tools as well. Uh, seems we don't really have a, a sword that has nothing on it. So we need to make ourselves a new diamond sword. We need a diamond pickaxe and I think a diamond shovel. Yeah, no, it was an axe. Pickaxe, axe and shovel. Yeah. Perfect. Now we'll just use these ones instead. And there we go. Pretty much that's a full set of the premium armor and tools. Now we'll just make ourselves a pack so Just add two sticks underneath your tools. Perfect. Now all we have to do is go and enchant these guys. Make the augments, which is going to require the infusion altar. So let's make that while we're at it too. Do we not have any wool? Oh, do I, did I use up all the wool or something? Uh, string. We have no string either. Um, so it's nighttime. We could go look for some spiders. Let's go have a look. Okay, that should be enough string. I also went and killed a few sheep while we were there. So 14 wool is more than enough. We even got a spawn egg. So that's perfect. Later on, we can make ourselves a mop farm. What we have to do now is just dye this red. Perfect. And now we can make everything we want. So we need one infusion altar and we need eight pedestals. Eight pedestals. Perfect. And we're also going to need some sort of redstone signal. So a button will do. Perfect. So now we'll just find a location to put this uh, relatively center. Probably about here is good. And we just need to put down the pedestals where it highlights. And then a redstone signal wherever. 
right there is fine. So to upgrade this armor, we need to make these augments. So the first one I really want is probably the flight one, but I think we'll probably go with strength because that will make the sword a lot stronger. By default, it does 24 attack damage. What we need to do to make this is quartz and diamond swords. But as you know, we're kind of low on diamonds, so we might need to go mining first. It is probably also a good idea to go mining right now because I think we're actually lacking on a few materials needed for this junk destroyer. We actually have a look at the recipe in here. Dragon head, two nether stars, eyes of ender, blocks of emerald, blocks of diamond, and then whatever these markers are, well, can, they're pretty cheap, I think. Flexible marker, uh, it's just made with all these, uh, so that's fine. Um, but the quarry in here requires a bunch of redstone, diamonds, and gold. Let's go mining right now. Since we basically have this Paxel, it mainly means we have an unbreakable tool because I don't think these guys have durability from what I can remember anyway. Let's put on our full set of armor, put these away in here. We're going to grab out this pickaxe for now. We're going to dig to whatever resource we need with this pickaxe and then use the fortune on this guy to mine because this pickaxe here is basically broken. Right, so we're going to use ourselves a diamond sight charm and a redstone sight charm. Well, I think I also have a gold charm. Yeah, we should be okay with on gold though. Right, let's get mining. And a bit of mining later, we got ourselves plenty of redstone and diamonds. Perfect, we can put all this stuff away now. So what we need to do now is actually start making the augments for this. So we can start by making ourselves diamond swords. Uh, so let's have a look at where the diamonds again. How many do we get in total? Yeah, close to nearly 300 of them. So perfect. So how many tiers are we going through? Three different tiers and there's two swords required in each time. So I need six diamond swords. We're going to need a bunch of quartz blocks. And if we have a look here, the top tier is going to require us a premium and the lowest tier is going to require tertium. So we just need some of these modules. We're going to grab out four of them, actually five of them, since we need one for the uh, sword as well. So let's head back over to our infusion altar and let's start putting down the ingredients we need. So if we look up essence here, so essence, we're going to need tertium essence and then the blue one, which is imperium and then red, which is a premium. And we can put away our charms. Right. So we'll start off with four of these. We need four, two blocks of quartz and two diamond swords. Oh, oh, the thunderstorm. Yikes. Oh, wait, we need to put our uh, attuned, unattuned augment in there. Perfect. That's not working. Did I do something wrong? Oh, okay. No, I my mistake. It's iron and then iron and then diamonds. Okay, so I didn't actually need that many diamonds. I just needed two diamond swords. So if that's the case, we could just put it all the way and make some iron swords. We should have plenty of iron swords to work through. There we go. Now we just need Imperium and yeah. Same thing over and over again. Okay, you have to pick it up and put it back down on the altar for it to work. I just noticed over there, there is a skeleton horse. Hmm. We might be able to get ourselves a new pet. But well, also, we're going to have to fight some skeletons, but whatever. Right, this should be the final one for strength. And uh, what we need to grab out now is a... Some sort of altar. So we go down Mystic Agriculture. I think it's called a Tinkering Altar. Or a Tinkering Table. Grab this guy out, put it here, grab our augment, put our sword in there. Each wet item can only have one item soft. These ones here are, I think, a work in progress. I don't know what these are for. But there we go. Strength augment. That brings our sword from 24. We have a look in here. 24 attack damage to 44. Damn, it adds like an extra 20 damage. And once we put sharpness on this guy, whew, he is going to be strong. Not as strong as the Morgan Sword, which is something we'll probably look into getting later on. Right, now we need to do the other augments we're going to re-need. Night Vision, Step Assist, Speed, and Flight. But Flight, we need to kill the Wither. So let's get the other three. All right, there we go. So we can take off these pieces of armor. So we want helmet is going to have night vision. Boots are going to have step assist and leggings are going to have speed too, because we're going to lose the speed that we had from before. But damn, this is actually probably a lot quicker. The only problem, we have a lot more FOV bouncing effects. So to change that, we can turn it down. Let's turn it down to maybe about 8% uh, or something. 
don't think there should be any other effects there now. Yeah, perfect. It's just the bouncing up and down, but not nothing to really do about that part. Turning off view bobbing, but I want that on. Right, now let's go fight the Wither. We need to fight the Wither four times. So let's go do that. Okay, over here looks like a really good spot to do it. Um, there's loads of lava over here, but damn, having this night vision now in the caves is amazing. So what I'm going to do is use this tinted glass here, and we're going to build ourselves a little box to put the Wither in, because I don't want to have to deal with him flying up into the air and all that. There we go. That should be a pretty big box for him. Um, yeah, that should work. Perfect. Oh, wow. Well, okay. You can probably see through the ground there, but whatever. So we'll spawn ourselves in the wither. I don't know if this matters. Yep. No, that's fine. And then we just wait for him to spawn. And let's see how fast we can take him out now with this sword. And then we'll try it later on with sharpness when we have to go make the chunk destroyer. Okay. Apparently I didn't build the roof high enough. But damn, look at that damage. Only problem is now I can't reach him. <laughs> Okay, so I've gotten enough, and whoa, okay, that was fast. Hey, we got ourselves a reward and the miniature yellow heart, which is something we're going to need later on, and we got Curse of Bones. So let's increase the height of this thing by one, so that way he actually can't get out this time. I had a feeling that was going to happen, because if it's three on the inside, it's meant to be four. And as you can see, the wither is not even doing anything to us, so it's perfect. Wow. That was so fast. Think we can get two of them in here? Yeah, we can. Stand back a bit, let him spawn, and then we'll get the other one. And down. Perfect. So we got our four nether stars. What do we get here? Feather falling, breach, and fire resistance. Not bad. Now we can use these warp scrolls, teleport home, and then we can teleport back over here. Now, the issue is, now that I don't have my original diamond sword, we do not have teleportation on our sword anymore. So we can't travel to the anchors without that enchantment. But that's not big of a deal. We can easily put that back on. So what we have to do now is put the four stars down like so. The premium essence, our augment, and go. Oh, this armor has durability. Oh, I didn't notice that. Uh, if that's the case, it definitely is going to be a good opportunity to get the blood chest. Not today, though, because I want to do Evil Craft in one go. But definitely getting the blood chest is something we're going to definitely have to get our hands on. Because we're going to need to recharge all of these charms now as well. But perfect. Now we have proper creative flight. And apparently the speed <laughs> augment affects our flight speed, which is crazy. Probably not as fast as like the ultimate jetpack, but damn, this feels Amazing. Oh, looks like we're going to have to take the elevator up because we cannot teleport through the walls. Right, so what I want to grab out now is an anvil and these tomes of scrapping. And um, the only issue that I have with these tomes of scrapping is that they cannot handle all the enchantments. Say we want the fortune and efficiency off of it. It will only give me efficiency and mending, meaning we'd lose the fortune off of this thing which isn't good. So we're going to have to figure out a different method of taking the fortune off this thing. Luckily, though, we have, if we look in here, the ability to basically enchant it by taking ourselves whatever pickaxe with enchantments onto it over onto our actual like chunk destroyer. So all we have to do is make ourselves the enchantment mover, which is still quite expensive, but at least that way we can move all these enchantments across. I want to get teleportation and range, and I want to add these onto my sword. There we go. So we have now teleportation, meaning we can now teleport around our base. Perfect. And if we look up sharpness, we have sharpness three, sharpness five. Let's grab the sharpness five here. Put this on. We can go way higher, but that brings it from 44 to 47 and a half. That is crazy powerful. And yeah, that's more or less it for that. So I think it's about time we head to the end. So let's grab ourselves out some eyes of ender. We only have three. We need a lot more than that. I think about 13 should be more than enough. And now if we throw the pearl, it's that way, northwest.
Okay, so the eyes turned around now, so it must be somewhere in this snowy biome. Uh, it looks like if let's go straight to the portal room, which should be over here. Uh, a little bit further. Yeah, so back a bit about here should be almost directly under uh, at the portal room. One block over. Perfect. So if we dig straight down right here, we should land in front of the portal. So let's change ourselves to a small tunnel and we can basically dig straight down. I forgot this, how deep down this is because of the new world height limit. Oh, a geode. Cool. Oh, okay. Here's the go. Mossy brick. And there's our portal. Perfect. Perfect landing for this thing now as well. We can get rid of that. And now let's load this thing up. So we have two eyes already in it. Perfect. Now, what we can do before we head in there now is we can have a quick look in here. Nah, eh, not much. I did find some caves that were interesting me, uh, especially the lush caves, because I want the spore blossom. I want to put a few of those around my house just to make the area look nice. The only thing we have to be kind of careful of is making sure we don't activate a warden. Not that I doubt he'd be able to kill us in our current state, but you, know, you don't want to be care. I want to be careful over here. Aha. Oh, Pathy also's boss. Oh, he is no match for us. Two shotted. Uh, look at the sea. Uh, not much. We'll come back here another day and explore it all. But yeah, this is so good. So before we head through, let's get ourselves a waystone down. This guy already has a name, but we'll just rename him to uh, End Portal. And there we go. And before we head in, let's go home and clear out our inventory. We'll grab some bottles and a bow and a stack of arrows. That should be more than enough for what we need. Uh, end portal, teleport to it now, and I think we're ready to jump in. Okay, so we're end is loading, and okay, we seem to be good. Anyway, with our bow, we can quickly go around here, take out all of the end crystals that is regenerating the ender dragon. Last one now. Perfect. Now, what I want to do is, wherever there's any of this dragon breath, grab some of it, and yeah, basically don't have to worry about it then for a while. And that should be more than enough for now. Right, we just need to wait for him to land or we could try and take him out. How much damage are we dealing to him? It seems our thorn necklace is doing most of the damage. Okay, we're dealing some damage. Oh, wow. Okay, I didn't realize how much damage he was actually dealing to me. Oh, we regen so fast. Doesn't really matter. How powerful is this bow? Damn, it's not actually that bad. We can take this guy out very quickly. Just need to get in closer. One more good swing. There we go. Perfect. That's the Ender Dragon taken care of. I looked at a couple of Endermen. We do actually need to collect some Ender Pearls, so this is actually a good opportunity. And since we can one-shot them, it's very easy. Perfect. Let me just grab the torches. Ooh, okay, so this is how we get the green hearts from the dragon. Do that. Grab out some torches, and then we can come down here and make it break. There we go. Got the end uh the dragon egg. Perfect. So we could teleport home now and then come back, but let's just go straight to the uh, end island. So grab out the end of pearls we were just getting and let's go. Okay. Uh, doesn't look too bad. What biome is this? This is, oh, I looked at two. This is ether leaf from biomes of, uh, the biomes you'll go. Cool. Oh, there's a ship over here. One of these crashed, crashed ships. Uh, got some end rods. Cool. How many of these guys did I look at by accident? Let's clear out a bit of an area here and see if there's any loot. There is two chests. Perfect. Uh, nothing much. Life steal. That's not bad. Put away all this and we'll grab it all. Eh, it's not great. Anything at the head of the boat? Will we lucky and get ourselves a dragon head? Eh, it doesn't look like it. Anything on the map? Nothing. Right, I guess we're just going to fly around until we find ourselves an end city. Oh, there's another boat over here. So that wasn't too hard to find. Anything at the head of the boat? No. We got our chest. Nothing great. And I'll take the end of pearls and that. Uh, and nothing great here. Right. Right. There we go. We found an end ship. Wow. There's actually another ship underneath it. So perfect. So we can go up here now and grab ourselves the skull. Ooh, it's a mystic shulker. And if you're going to want to try and take him out. Perfect. We've got the skull. Now we can just head down here. Take you out. Just one shot. Yeah. Grab the elytra. Uh, fly so we can just avoid having to deal with the... Uh, levitation, Totem of Void Undying, interesting. Ender Staff, another music book. Uh, nothing great. And what have we got here? Sinister Switch. Eh, not much. 
gold backpack. Oh, actually, speaking of backpacks, I think I need to upgrade mine to netherite. Yeah, it's only diamond. We should upgrade our backpack soon. All right, take you out and let's go lose some of the chests here. Why not? We might not have enough space to take most of this. Let's just take all the important stuff. Ooh, a lucky scarf is going to be really handy. So what will this mythic shulker give us? Mythic pair of diamond boots. Perfect. Nice. I just not spotted this over here. I know we're getting sidetracked. We'll probably do a whole video exploring all the different mentions and getting ourselves all the different loot. Okay, I don't want these dudes. Uh, I guess it's really good for a lot of spawners, but I don't really need them. Oh, they turn into broken spawners. Cool. So if we have a look down here, is there any loot? There is. Nice. Skulk Smite? Hmm. Does that mean we'll be able to kill the, the Warden faster? That could be worth taking. Oh, I don't have any water breathing. Ooh, a Crystal Heart. That could be very good. It increases our own health. What the heck is this? Oh, it's a mine shaft. Okay, funny. Right, I think that's probably good enough for now. So let's go back home. Let's get ourselves out of Waystone here. Put some stuff away. Get out of Waystone here. Mark this place and then let's go home. So end city and home. Cool. Now we just need to empty our inventories. Inventories emptied and now we can put on these two charms. This is a necklace slot. So I guess this will have to go on there. I want to hide it because I don't want to cover my face. And we also have this crystal heart. Now the thing is, it's going to replace our belt slot, or we could put it in the top curio slot here, uh, which we'll probably leave in there for now until we probably get proper fire resistance. Um, so yeah, this will give us an entire set of new hearts, which is amazing. Right, now what is left really is to make ourselves the chunk destroyer. To make it now, what do we need? Workbench, which is all the modium of diamonds and iron gold. Perfect, that's fine. Actually, are we okay on gold? Uh, we might be pushing it. We might only get one thing done. Uh, we might need to get more. We'll see. Anyway, so workbench. What do we need? Iron blocks, gold blocks, and then a diamond block. Perfect. So workbench. Let's go inside here for the time being because we have power here so we can actually hook everything up. Uh, let's replace this guy for the, time, uh, for the moment. So connect you up here and here's the workbench. So the way I believe this works is it basically can hold an infinite amount of uh, materials in one slot. I could be wrong about that. But if we wanted to say make the quarry, we just get a, a couple stacks of diamonds, couple stacks of gold, couple stacks of iron on each one. I think I, I didn't grab any ender pearls yet, did I? Now oh, we have 61. That might be enough. So all we have to do now is basically just throw all the ingredients in here. What are we missing? Redstone, I think. We throw all the ingredients in here and it'll allow us to it'll tell us what we can build now. So we want a quarry. There we go. One. And we need three of them. There we go. We got three quarries. Now we need to make ourselves the pump plus, which is basically gold, iron, redstone, a lot of glass, and some cactus. Now the thing about cactus is we don't really have much. I have 41. I have a little mini of a cactus farm growing out here, but it's not enough. We need to set up a multiple uh, multiple of these guys to be growing. And I think the quickest way to do that will be to use botany pots. Let's grab out something like eight po uh, botany pots here so we can actually grow a bunch of these things now. If we just grab like a chest or something or a drawer actually. And I think the best farmland is Insanium farmland, but we don't really have Insanium right now. So we're just going to make ourselves this farmland here, there's a premium version. I just need to grab out some dirt since none of it's in the systems all of my dank. So we grab out eight of premium dust and we'll just put it over here. So we'll just have a drawer right here. This is the center, isn't it? No, this is the center. It looks off. Yeah, this is center. Okay. So we can put basically the botany pots like so. See if we're going to have an odd number, so I'll ignore this one. And what we're going to do then is in here, we're just going to give it a farmland and a cactus. Like so. And since this one here will only output into this one, we're going to hook up item pipes to pull from this guy back into this drawer. Perfect. Now what we have to do is basically sit here and wait for everything. So while that's growing, I'm going to go get more gold and ender pearls. Okay, I think we're about ready to start crafting this chunk destroyer. We've got plenty of cactus. As you notice, I just killed a few withers, so we should be good with that too. So put all those in there, put that in there. I have all the glass in there already. I just need to grab out these ingredients in here, put those in there. Uh, what are we missing for making ourselves the pump quarry? Looks like iron. 
There we go. So pump plus. I think we need three of these guys. And I think we're low on gold at the moment. Oh, no, it's uh, glass. Okay, I'm short on glass. Do I have much sand? I might have smelted all my sand. Do I have any in my bag? No, I don't. I guess we have to quickly go to the desert. All right, that should be enough sand. We just chuck that in here to start smelting. And also with the gold, I forgot to actually process this up. Uh, do we have any ore hammers left? Oh, well, this one's on his last legs. Hang on. And we'll just crush down all this gold here. Perfect. So all we need to do now is grab out the glass, some extra gold, and put that all in here. Craft one more of those, put those in there. And what are we missing now from the Chunk Destroyer? I think it's just the Dragon Head. No? Uh, what else are we missing? Ah, the markers. That should be good. And how many do we need? Three. Uh, we're still missing something. Let me just put everything in the order that we have it. Oh, it's the emerald and diamond blocks. That's what we're missing. Just had to buy some more emeralds from a villager, but we should have enough of it now. So put this in here. Chunk Destroyer. Wow, it actually requires a lot of power to craft. Perfect. Now we can take everything out of here since we don't need any more. Wait, did I make three pumps? Oh, I only needed two. Oops. Ah, oh, well, doesn't really matter. Right, we need to do something now about all the resources we're going to be getting. So we need ourselves a drawer controller. And we're going to need a ton of drawers now to go with this. So do we want to use two X drawers or do we want to use four X drawers? And I think I'm going to go with spruce or oak this time. I think what we'll do is we'll use the one X for the regular raw ores. We'll use the two times for the um, block versions of the raw ore. And we'll use the four times for all the random resources we're going to be getting, like dirt, stone. And I believe that the mining dimension is completely different in this version, where we now have access to the nether and end in the same dimension, which is crazy good. So I don't know how many we're going to need. I'm going to craft about 16 of these guys just to start with, and then we're going to craft the other ones then. We'll craft 16 of each. To be able to see all the resources in the system or in these drawers, we're going to need ourselves a storage bus. So we're just going to craft one of these, which we can hook up to the controller here and view everything. So I'm going to have pretty much this guy right here. And then we're going to hook up all our drawers. But we'll do that afterwards and uh, once we've got all the resources coming in. So I can literally just put that right here. It's going to set the priority like a thousand. So that way, anything that we put back in the system will prioritize the drawers first. And we're also going to need a little bit of cable. Right, let's get ourselves a point. Some ender drawers or ender chests. I'm going to make three ender pouches because we're probably going to be requiring a lot of resources. Now, by default, this is going red. Not what I want. Do we have much strength to make any wool? Uh, I guess I could dye the wool back. There we go. So, what we need to do with these guys is hook two of them up right here. And we're going to put this, say, item pipes. Actually, no, we won't hook it up just yet. We need to go to the mining dimension. We need the teleport pad. Pretty cheap. Just a small amodium. And I don't know where to put this. I guess I'll leave it over my base or like my house. We'll leave it like in the corner here next to my bed. So if we just shift right click this thing. It'll bring us to the mining dimension. And this is basically a super flat world that goes super, super far down. You can see we're nearly at the world height limit at 250, uh, 255. I think it's the height limit. But yeah, we have this entire world to mess with right now. So if we open our chunk borders here, just so we can see where we're placing this thing. Let's go one chunk south and put it like right anywhere in this chunk here. Perfect. So you can see it will start mining out this chunk. Not what we want. We want it to mine the one further ahead. So we need to increase the area by one and decrease the top one by one. So if we increase this to say five, this will go five chunks out that way. And then we want to increase this one to maybe two and then this one too. So it's almost a five by five area, which is huge for what we want. We could even go way bigger if we wanted to. We could do something like a 10 by 10 area. Now we probably don't have the resources to be able to hold all this, but you know what? It doesn't really matter. So what we need to do is put an inventory next to this thing. It will auto eject. Uh, the only thing we're missing is some ender pearls because this guy is very small to begin with. If we grab some ender pearls and I think shift right clicking it, will increase the size to basically your inventory. So 27 slots are available in here, which is great. So all we have to do now is basically just give it power. So point underneath and look at the frame, how fast this is going. This guy requires a lot of power. Now he's only requiring a tiny bit to get started, but once he starts mining, it's going to require 
so much power to run this thing. But you'll see how fast this thing goes. Where's it starting? Over here. Look at this. And if we jump down here, look how far down this goes. Ah, we even get all the modium in this dimension. Now we're in the deep dark area. Now we're hitting the nether and then the end. So any resource that is available in these two dimensions, we will now get. The only thing is it will not mine all the modium, but we can go manually grab all that. Now, the cool thing about the Chunk Destroyer is it has its own internal inventory. Basically, it will store everything it mines until you're able to pump it all out, which is really handy because I do not have the storage space right now. So this thing will just keep going until it's done, and then you can just pump all the resources out as you want. All right, so we're looking at Cobblestone and Endstone and Netherrack. Let's grab each one of these guys and give them their own drawer right here. So Endstone, Cobblestone, and Netherrack. Oh, and Deep Slate. There we go. And what we can do then is grab ourselves a pipe. And we will need to make probably the best pipe upgrades, but we're kind of probably not be able to do that just yet. Any more item pipes. And yeah, now what we have to do is basically hook this up right here, which is going to be very slow to begin with, but that's why we're going to have multiple extract points on this thing. Oh yeah, we need to link it together. And the thing is, we're going to give this guy here a void upgrade because we don't want to be holding like millions of these items here. So select this guy, link it to this, and now you can see all the netherrack building up. That's just going to keep extracting until like it's done. We also got dirt to deal with, so we'll probably give that its own drawer then as well right here. And we'll slap a void upgrade on it and we'll link it up. There we go. Uh, that's the only problem now. It's going to start putting random resources in different slots and now it's voiding it all. Not what I want, uh, so that's why we need to lock it before we put anything in it. All right, this should be extracting out extremely fast now. So, as you can see now, it's full of redstone, so we need a place for, to put that. Now, I'm probably going to need a ton of drawer upgrades first. All right, I think there should be enough gold upgrades. So, if each one gets two, that's 130-something thousand items per drawer, which is great. Um, but once we put down the other things, like, we're going to have, like, probably redstone and, like, all these gems in their own drawer, like, with sulfur. So if we put this one right here, and this one here, and then what we'll do is we'll grab out redstone, gems, coal, and sulfur. So we'll have coal and sulfur in the same one, and then red gems and redstone. Why not? And then we'll just lock these drawers and hook them up. And as you can see, they only hold 1k each. That's where we're now going to give them some gold upgrades. So now they can hold 262,000, which is probably still nowhere near enough. But now you see we're getting all the resources. So give me a moment to filter all of these into separate drawers, and then we should be good from there. And just like that, we have all of our ores separated out into all of their special drawers. I ended up adding even more upgrades, but damn, this thing mined out so much. We have a look here. Look at the size of this hole that it is dug. Look at all the all the modium that's just floating in the air. This is crazy. Now, the only thing is we never added fortune or efficiency onto this guy. So he can actually even go in faster and produce more resources. But we'll do that probably now next episode. So we'll upgrade this guy. Yeah, I had to kind of go a bit spaghetti here trying to pull out everything out of these ender chests. Like it was so much. Like we have a look in here. We have over a million cobble deep slate, a million netherrack, a million endstone. And uh, I only added the extra upgrades after the cobblestone finish. But look at that. Like nearly like 20,000 tin, 157,000 copper, nearly 50k iron, loads of redstone, diamonds, gold. Oh, we don't have to worry about resources ever again. But I'm going to have this game going multiple times, but we need a way to process all these resources now, which is probably what we're going to do now next episode. So I'm going to end it there. So hope you all enjoyed. And if you did, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you're new and hit that notification bell while you're at it then as well. So without any further ado, goodbye.